Come on in, have a seat at the table. Welcome to episode two of Lessons in Levia. So last week, I kind of told you how I was interested in Levia from the release of Monarch. How I feel like she's an interesting character because there's a lot of ways you can go while building her. And I had kind of like an interesting deck last time. It was like more so brutish cards, not so much shadow brute stuff. And the reason why I wanted to try it was because I've done other routes and I haven't had much success. And I feel like one week later now and a whole lot of testing that I've tweaked the list. It's almost unrecognizable. We're going to talk about the changes I've made and why some of the statistics and reasonings why I've done some things. And then the play style of the deck that I, uh, or the play style I use with this deck that I think makes it work. And the reasons why I've had more success with this iteration than, um, my previous ones. So let's take a look at, um, the updated deck list. And as you can see, the equipment slots are pretty much the same. There was a while this week that I was messing around with the Hexagore, but I didn't like it. There was even one game I played against um, a local uh, competitor named Bradley, and he was using Prism, and he went heavy on the Auras, and because I wasn't able to swing the Hexagore to try to get some of them off the table, if I didn't have a hand where I had an attack action card I could play, um, he was kind of able to just do what he wanted with Prism, and I lost 40 to 0. That's right, 40 to 0. However, we switched to the meat axe, and I won the rematch. Thank gosh. So my testing with the Hexagore is on pause. Prism's probably not the right you know, opponent to try to learn how to use that weapon or set that weapon up. But I'm totally on pause with it. I'm going full on ravenous meat axe mode from here on out. It does a lot for us, and I think uh, I think it's the right call. So same things as last time: meat axe, skull cap, husk, gambler's gloves, scabskin leathers, the no rune uh, hood, gloves, and robe, and then the hooves of the shadow beast. And I think when you're playing against chain. I think what you want to do with uh, what I when I get into like um, the playstyle of this deck, what you want to do against Chain is use the Hooves of the Shadow Beast, use the Null Rune Gloves, the Husk, and the Skull Cap, and against everybody else, you go with the Scabskin Leathers, Gambler's Gloves, Arcanite Skull Cap, Carrion Husk, and then obviously your Null Rune stuff in case you came across a classic constructed Kano. Since we're looking through this from a classic constructed standpoint, that's very rare. But um, the scabskin leathers are just so outstanding. But I think um, against Chain, you can make the swap to the Hooves of the Shadow Beast. So then you can wear the gloves confidently as your Null Rune item. Still have your Carrion Husk, because there are turns where uh, Chain does a lot of damage. And then your skull cap blocking for, you know, possibly three throughout the game is just too strong. So, let's take a look at the deck list and the cards that are in the deck and what has changed. And so I'm going to start off by saying that most of the cards in here are, are six power attacks. To be exact, before we even go through any of the cards, I got a little write-up that I did. And so... There are 46 six power attacks in this deck, which is 65%. 22 of those six power attacks can turn off blood debt. Six non six power attacks that can turn off blood debt. So there's a total of 28 cards that have the ability to turn off blood debt, 24 six power attacks that cannot turn off blood debt. So I'll re repeat that one more time. I have 46 total 6 power attacks, which is a total of 65% of my deck. 22 of those 6 power attacks can turn off blood debt. 24 of them cannot. And then I have 6 non-6 six power attacks that can also turn off blood debt. We'll get into some of the other cards that can also turn off blood debt, but this seems to be like the sweet spot 
at least this past week that I've really gotten comfortable with as far as the amount of sixes in my deck and then what those sixes can provide us early and late because later on we definitely want cards that can turn off blood debt then you're going to see when we go through the cards i have nine you know action cards or pre-buffs that can all turn off blood debt and those nine are all unworldly bellows nine defense reactions and we'll talk about why i switched um to some of these defense reactions i've picked i've taken some suggestions um, from people in the comments and they were very very great and worked so much better and um, and then one doomsday so that's a total of 19 cards that don't attack for six nine nine is 18 one doomsday that's 27 percent of our deck uh, is non attacks so 46 six power cards 65 percent of our deck um, th which is great 37 cards that turn off blood debt in total because I'm counting those nine unworldly bellows All but three cards in this deck defend for something so which is also really important because the way that I've gone about playing um, Leviah this week has been extremely defensive in the beginning and then after a certain point and you've filled your graveyard and maybe you've taken away some of the um, better lines of play from your opponent, do you start to play some of your cards and then build up that blood debt? And the great thing that I've noticed about this deck is that I am able to play both attack action cards or swing the meat axe to keep constant pressure while blocking with two cards a turn or sometimes even three. So... First, I want to talk about the um, the non shadow brute, or, or not not non shadow brute because there are some, the non turning off blood debt six power cards. So all of our six power attacks that don't turn off blood debt. Why I like them and why I've been using them. The first one I got here in front of me is Predatory Assault, which you'll see here on the deck list that we have three of. The reason I like this, it's a two-costed attack, which means for the cost of a blue, I can play an Unworldly Bellow into a Predatory Assault, turn off Blood Debt, and do six plus however much damage from my Unworldly Bellow. Or, if this is early in the game, I can just play to attack with this, or I'm blocking with this. The text on the card says, if you've discarded a card with six or more this turn, Predatory Assault gains Dominate which can happen if you have multiple action points and you've attacked with your meat axe and you've discarded a six and then follow up that attack with a predatory assault. The, no, uh, the next non-turning off blood debt six power attack I have is pack hunt. I run three red pack hunts for almost the similar reason as why I run the predatory assaults. It's a six power attack that only costs two resources it intimidates, which is kind of awesome. Defense for three, attacks for six. Same reasons that I said for one blue or, or, or you know two yellows, we can play an unworldly into this if we draw into an awkward hand and we can't turn off blood debt and with, a, with like just playing a card. And so we play the unworldly and then into a card. It blocks and we can just straight up play it. Then I'm rocking three Command and Conquers. Two cost, six power attack, amazing um, ability, you know, no defense reactions, and if it hits, blow up the arsenal. There's nothing about Command and Conquer that I don't need to say that you guys already don't know. Um, after Command and Conquer, I've added three red Rally the Rear Guards, and I like this card for a lot of reasons. Reason one, two cost, six power attack that we can play at any time. Sure, it can't get buffed by an unworldly, just like how Command and Conquer cannot get buffed by an unworldly, but the upside here of being, being able to block with this card, discarding a six, which is good because we want to fill up our graveyard to then make this defend for five, gets around dominating some stuff. I just like the utility of this Rally the Rear Guard a lot, and I've enjoyed playing it. Sometimes I'll attack with it, sometimes I'll block with it. I've really liked it. Next up, 
Now, this is a Shadow Brute card, but it's a Shadow Brute card that doesn't turn off Blood Debt. And I play three yellow Graveling Growls. Now, I've thought about playing off six because we're playing the Unworldly Bellow and Dread Screamers, which we'll talk about. So the chances of us putting a six into our Banished Zone and then playing this for one are really high. However, I don't ever want to run into a circumstance where I can't play a card. Especially early in the game, if if I'm not going to play a card that banishes and I don't want to you know, start dealing with Blood Dead every turn just yet, Graveling Growl is great to get late game. It's also a cool arsenal card for when you know you'll have additional action points. You play a Dread Screamer into the Graveling Growl or an Unworldly Bellow into the Graveling Growl. It's awesome. Uh, you can have two action points from Skabskin Leathers play a card and then use your graveling play a card that banishes then use your graveling growl as the second action point since it's so cheap however i don't want to run the reds um i'm i'm comfortable with the six attack the yellow pitch blocking for three especially with a card that can only be played sometimes that that may only be played if you banish a card with six power this turn um seems like it would happen a lot sometimes it doesn't though so that's the reason why I didn't want to go with six of them. Sometimes you get drawn to a hand of too many Graveling Growls and no way to turn off Blood Debt, and you can't play this card, and it just feels really bad. Um, I got three yellow Smash Instincts. Yellow Pitch. Yes, it costs three instead of two, but it pitches for, uh, pitches for two, blocks for three, attacks for six, and intimidates. Three yellow Beast Within. Um... The trigger can happen in multiple ways. It can go into the graveyard from the meat axe. It can go into the graveyard from play, paying the cost to, to play another card, like like a Deadwood Rumbler or something. There, there are ways to get this into the graveyard. You could do it off of a Rally the Rear Guard when you're blocking with a Rally the Rear Guard. Um, there's just a lot of ways to get Beast Within uh, text to trigger. And at the end of the day, it pitches for yellow, blocks for three, attacks for six. And then finally, we got Wrecker Romps Blue, which obviously is awkward to play. You almost never want to play it, but it's a blue pitch, attacks for six, blocks for three. And worst case scenario, it can be played. Sure, you have to have the resources and an additional card, but I just think it's, hey, a blue six, blocks for three. I need that. I need those resources, and it helps with the mechanics. Um, of our deck so again the non blood the cards that do not turn off blood debt that attack for six three predatory assaults three pack hunts red three command and conquers three rally the rear guards red three yellow graveling growls three yellow smash instincts three yellow beast withins and three blue wrecker romps and I like running that many because I enjoy blocking, blocking, pitch a yellow, attack with one of these cards. For six, most of the time on these reds, the rallies, the commands, the predatories, the pack hunts, instead of swinging the meat axe, um, and sometimes you swing the meat axe, it's fine. But I've enjoyed it. I haven't felt like it's awkward. I think there's only been a few times, like, one or twice this past week where I've taken some blood debt because I didn't have a hand that could turn it off. But the good thing about this now, excuse me, I'm about to plug my computer in. If the cons if the computer goes dark for a second, I'm apologize, but it's about to run out of battery. If um if you if you have these cards, they can be played on any turn, late or early. Whereas a lot of the cards that require you to banish feel bad to be played early in the game so let's talk about the cards that can turn off blood debt that attack for six power there's a few in here that do not attack for six power and i'll talk about those as well so we have the three one costed boneyard marauders super cheap super efficient banishes three attacks for six there's no reason to not play this card three red dread screamers that attack for six if you banish a six, it's going to gain go again. Blocks for three. And then I run all nine. 
in the past I've done this and ran all nine. And I think it's important because if I'm going to have a card that doesn't attack for six power, I like the upside of going wide with um, Leviya. And by going wide, I even mean just two, another one attack at, or just another action point. Because a lot of the times we can attack for six, anywhere between six to nine, sometimes 12 in a turn, sometimes 10, 11. And people will be okay with blocking that out. But if you can go, you know, later in the game and really deadlock them, attack for a six, five, or four with go again, and then have another play after that, it feels really strong. Those Graveling Growls come great after a Dread Screamer. Um, you could play then, you've turned off Blood Debt, you could play another one of those cards that costs two. And so, I, I enjoyed rocking all nine Dread Screamers. It's really worked for me this week. Um, awesome. I love it. I think it's her best, you know, common card, in my opinion. Um, then I got three Endless Maws, and for a while I was only doing two of them. Because it's expensive, right? Three for a potential to go up to nine. You got to banish three and you have to hit the six. So, um, I just think the upside of this card's too good. Especially later in the game. When you when you pitch a blue and you come at somebody for probably nine. You could even have another action point from the scab skins. They're like, oh my god, I gotta deal with nine, and then whatever's coming after. Could be another attack action card, could be the meat axe. I like Endless Maw a lot. Um, so I went up to a third copy of it. Um, I got six Hungering Slaughter Beasts here. I got the reds and the yellows, because it's my favorite card um, to just consistently turn off our blood debt, do decent damage with um, little repercussions. So the three reds attack for seven. You banish three. You don't have to hit a six. There's no, um, you know, on six, on banishing a six, like, buff or, or claws. Doesn't matter what you banish. You just have to banish, um, which is good, because sometimes if you do have some non-sixes in there, when we talk about our defense reactions and our unworldly bellows, um, it, playing this early and banishing cards that don't have the blood deck keyword and getting them out of our graveyard feels awesome. So uh, I like this card. I run the yellows, pitches for two, blocks for three, attacks for six. Um, three writhing beast hulks, the reds. Um, great card for later in the game because of that dominate keyword. If you banish a six, getting that dominate. But two attack for six, turns off blood debt. That's what we like. Cheap, not... Uh, I think our only... Our only, like, we only run two, or, or one, two, three, four, five, six. The Endless Maws that, are, that cost three. And then these three Deadwood Rumblers that are blue that cost three. Um, most of our cards cost one or two in this deck. And then we got a couple, those Smash Instincts, those Beasts Within, that cost three as well. But... I'm rarely playing these Deadwood Rumblers. On a turn, if I have to play a Deadwood Rumbler, it's a probably because I'm worried about not being able to turn off Blood that, that turn. Otherwise, it's a six attack. It pitches for three. It could possibly turn off Blood Debt. Draw a card, then discard a random card. If a card with six or more is discarded this way, banish a card from a graveyard. It's the only card in our deck that doesn't block, and I think that's okay to have three cards that don't block. Even though when I start talking about our strategy, I want to block a lot. Like a lot, a lot. And I was getting more success by locking my opponents out almost every turn. And then waiting and waiting and waiting. And then eventually using my husk, my skull cap, my scab skins to keep my hand. And then we become the aggressive player and we p apply the pressure every turn. Which then kind of turns the table and then lastly so harvest now it can turn off blood debt but it costs six so that's a lot and it's clauses like you know it's it's can get buffed and damaged for every blood debt card you banish this way we're usually not playing this i mean we can but um a blue six blocks for three um does does three things blocks 
is pitches for three and attacks for six and and can possibly turn off blood dead. It actually does all four of the things we want it to do, um, even if it has a heavy cost. So those are my six power attacks aside from the three yellow dreads and the three blue dreads that turn off blood debt. And then lastly, like I said before, I have um, defense reactions and then some, you know, shadow brute actions that buff our attacks. So the unworldly bellows, the three reds, the three yellows, and the three blues, they all block for three. I don't have to tell you about the pitch values. We know the red, blue, yellow scheme. As an additional cost to play, you banish three cards from your graveyard. The next brute or shadow action card you play this turn, brute or shadow. So a shadow brute card, a shadow card, or a brute card gets that buff on the card. And it doesn't need to banish a six to get this buff. So you just banish three, you get the buff, you play your card. It's great to play this into a Graveling Growl. You can play this to turn off Blood Debt into, you know, hopefully you hit that six, you turn off your Blood Debt into one of those other attacks that we got in here. The Predatories, the um, the Pack Hunts, the uh, Beasts Withins, the Smash Instincts, the Graveling Growls, the cards that don't turn off Blood Debt. You play this and then into one of those and it's kind of like it does turn off Blood Debt then. And then finally, we have... Um, nine defense reactions and i went with per some suggestions in the comments last week um the cheaper options so all of our defense reactions cost zero three fate for scenes which is great to opt you can set up that top card because if you have an additional um or you want to swing the meat that <laughs> swing the meat swing the meat axe the next turn you'll know what's on top or you, you can cycle a non-six and maybe guarantee hitting that six when you swing that meat axe so it can buff up to five. And then just knowing what's coming into your hand is important with Levia, Levia. Um, three sync blows to cycle some cards if you have a red heavy hand. Because I will talk about how many reds we play, how many yellows, and how many blues. Um, and then the three blue reckless swings because it pitches for three can kill somebody at the end of the game if they're if they're not you know savvy of it and then um cause zero sure you have to discard the additional card but blocks for four so those are nine defense reactions and then our one oddball out is the doomsday card which is awesome uh i got it off a couple times this week in testing um getting blasma fett on the table feels great um so Doomsday has to be in the deck, even though it doesn't block. So I lied when I said that we only have three cards that don't block. This Doomsday does not block as well. So the Deadwood Rumblers and Doomsday don't have a blocking value, whereas all of our other cards do. And then um, uh, our defense reactions obviously do as well. So the way that I've been going about playing, like I said, was I'm finding myself blocking heavily in the beginning of the game. And I'm looking to play some of these attack action cards that don't require me to banish uh, three cards and start getting blood debt until I kind of want to start getting blood debt. So I'm playing my rallies, on my predatory assaults, my pack hunts, um, the commanding conquerors, the beast within, the smash instinct, or I'm attacking with the meat axe or the wrecker romp or whatever it may be, or I'm attacking with the meat axe. Blocking with three cards, keeping hopefully a yellow or a blue, pitching, swing the meat axe. Block with three cards, pitch, swing the meat axe. Fill that graveyard, get it stocked up, have your opponent get a little frustrated that they're not doing much to you, but still be able to apply that pressure to them by possibly swinging for five back at them every turn. So then when you feel comfortable with a, a great hand, maybe you see a line where you have a red dread screamer into a graveling growl or a red dread screamer into another card or, or another play that you like, um, whatever it may be. And you want to keep your whole hand. Then that's the turn where you kind of lean heavily on your equipment. You take some damage and then you start to become the aggressor because once you start attacking, um, you kind of don't want to stop playing attack action cards. These shadow brood attack action cards, because, 
um, you're going to start to accumulate that blood debt. Now, you won't start to accumulate a massive amount of blood debt. In the past, not the last week's episode. That last week's episode deck was weird. It was, like, really weird. But in the past, when I've run, like, a more um, aggressive build of uh, Leviah, I would accumulate massive amounts of blood debt. Like, I've gotten into the 20s and close to 30 before. And I've never seen that happen in this version. I've gotten, like, up to 7 or 8 or sometimes close to 10, but for the most part, if you're playing this right and you're blocking and you're biding your time and, and you're just attacking back, slowly chipping away, and then kind of like Bravo wants to block sometimes and then swing the hammer and block and swing the hammer until he's got that hand that he really likes to then become the aggressor. I'm playing it very similar to that style, and I've really liked it, and it's been a lot of fun this week way more fun than my last, you know, iteration of this deck and it that last one sucked. <laughs> but this one feels great. And so um you're blocking, you're blocking, you're waiting to go and then you once you start, you kind of just snowball damage from there. Uh take advantage of the scabskin leathers, especially when you see an option to keep attacking twice a turn. Once you get your opponent on the ropes, um Having more than one action point feels amazing. So, I, I really like it. I, there's probably a world where, um, where like, you can work time snap potions in here. That's the one that gives you action points. Like, block with three cards on your turn, play a time snap. So, that way, later in the game, you can pop those, get those action points. Not have to worry about having the pants. Maybe you've whiffed on one... On a dice roll, you roll a one and you use your gloves. So your gloves are gone, so you're a little nervous to use the pants. So let's talk about um, some deck statistics. And then I'll talk about the cards that I've considered used this week. And um, open it up, you know, for you guys to comment back and give me some suggestions. Or if you like this style. But I really liked this version of this deck so far. It's been playing really well. So we have a total of 71 attack action cards. Our average cost is a 1.73, and our average pitch is a 1.73. Identical average cost to pitch, and that's with Soul Harvest being in there costing 6, bringing that average up higher than normal, and most of the time we're not paying that 6, um, which would then probably bring our average cost down a little bit. We have 36 one pitch cards 18 two pitch cards and 17 three pitch cards we have nine zero costed cards 15 one costed cards 33 two costed cards and 13 three costed cards so the numbers seem to have worked i haven't gotten into many situations where i have felt uncomfortable i feel like i've had enough blues and yellows to afford what I'm trying to do on my turns or um, at least be able to swing the meat axe early and um, yeah I've really enjoyed this one I know I've said that a lot now but it's been a lot better than past weeks have been so um, some cards that I've tinkered around with right three blue convulsions from the bellows of hell and um, great card cost two um, you can buff any, you can give any card dominate if you hit a six off, off the banish and plus one. So plus one, give a card dominate. The reason why I got rid of it was I think I switched over to the Deadwood Rumbler Blues. Originally I liked the Convulsions because it blocked, but I was like, I think I wanted more sixes. I wanted to be closer to 65% sixes in my deck. And so I think that was the reason why I chose to take Convulsions from the Bellows of Hell Blue out. Um, riled Up Yellow. It costs three, attacks for six, blocks for three. If you've discarded a card with six or more this turn, Riled Up gains plus one. And when I'm thinking about, like, okay, which of these yellow pitch, six attack, um, brute attack cards that cost three do I want? I think the text and upside of Beast Within is better. I like the Smash Instinct's um, Innate Intimidate better because the chances of us discarding a card with six or more this turn to make this attack seven is possible. 
especially if we've done things like the meat axe prior. But I opted to go with some two costed um, red brood attack cards instead of riled up. Um, what else have I messed around with? We talked about the red Graveling Growls. I definitely think there's a world where you can play them instead of the yellows or play all six. Um, I just didn't like it when I had all six in. It just didn't fit my style and what I felt like I'm trying to do with this deck. But I totally see how great this card can be um, with Unworldly Bellow. Maybe there's a world where I should do um, three yellows and maybe two reds and maybe take away something else. But... Uh, as of right now, I'm comfortable with where I'm at. But I do like the 7 for 1. Just a pain in the butt um, to play this card. Now, getting to the to some of the juicier things. You're going to notice, if you haven't already noticed, I don't play a single one of her Majestic cards. There's not a Shadow of Blasma Fed in here. There's not a Deep Rooted Evil in here. And there's not a Mark of the Beast in here. And the reasoning behind that, let's start with Shadow of Blasmophet. Only pitches for one, attacks for six, can turn off Blood Debt possibly. You have to draw a card, banish a card, or draw a card, discard a card if it's six or more. Search your discard, search your discard pile um, for a card with Blood Debt and banish it. So it has the option to possibly turn off Blood Debt. You do have to do the text. There's no like may. So if I want to play that early for a two-costed six attack, I have to banish a card with Blood Debt from my graveyard and start dealing with Blood Debt. I don't want to do that early. And it doesn't block. So it's not fitting my personal strategy. Uh, Deep-Rooted Evil. It's a three-cost yellow. It doesn't turn off Blood Debt. Sure, it can be played out of the banish zone on a turn where you've um, uh, banished a card with six or more. I believe that's what it says. But it costs three to do that. I can swing the meat axe for two if I have an additional action point for one less damage. And it doesn't turn off blood and it doesn't block. So I'd t I'll take Smash Instinct and said, please give me a card for three that blocks, attacks for six, intimidates one. I don't care if there's a turn where I have played a Dread Screamer or a um, Unworldly Bellow in then want to play Deadwood Rumbler. I want to play these Unworldly Bellows into a two-costed attack so that one blue can afford me the entire turn rather than have to pay one for the Unworldly Bellow and then I banish a card with six and then play that Deep Rooted Evil out of the banished zone for three. I just don't like it. doesn't fit my playstyle of this deck. And then Mark of the Beast, you're probably asking yourself, like, but yeah, that one's solid. It turns off Blood Dead, it blocks for three, it's a yellow pitch and attacks for six. Here are my problems with Mark of the Beast right now. In my current strategy, I can't attack with it early, because it whenever it would go to the graveyard, it would go to the um, banish zone instead. Sure, it turns off Blood Dead itself that turn, but then the next turn I'm dealing with that Blood Dead. When you block with it, it goes to the Banished Zone after the combat chain closes. I'm dealing with that Blood Debt. It pitches for two and is a great pull of the Ripcord, like a card that's just get out of jail free card later in the game that turns off Blood Debt. But I want a card that I can play early that's not going to set me back when my game plan is to try to defend, 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 then set up and choose when I'm going to start banishing these cards. I've hit this card off the top from the meat axe. Feels like shit. Sure, it makes the meat axe swing for five, but then you have to banish it, turn off blood debt, then deal with it next turn. There's too many um, variables for the play style that I'm doing of this deck being very uh, block heavy, defense reaction heavy, and then attacking late to where this card is not fitting in that play style. And trust me, I love this card. It's just not fitting the style of the deck. Um... Howls from Beyond. I've seen the Team Covenant rock Howls from Beyond. Great, but as far as my non sixes go, I don't want um, I don't want a lot of non sixes, and I like Unworldly Bellow. It furthers our um, agenda of turning off Blood Debt. Sure, this can be played from the Banished Zone. But it doesn't turn off Blood Debt, so I don't really care about it right now. Um, I don't think it's bad. It's just not fitting my style. 
Um, I played Lunatride Plunderer Yellow for a while. Blocks for two can possibly turn off Blood Debt. If Lunatride Plunderer hits a hero, banish it. So you would banish this card and then up to one card from their soul, which is good if you're playing against a light hero. Only blocking for two, but I do like the flexibility of this possibly being able to turn off Blood Debt on hit. It does cost three to play, though, so three for six. And so, again, when I'm thinking about those three for sixes, um, I just opted to go with Beast Within and Smash Instinct instead and uh, let let my yellow, my Graveling Growl is a one for six, you know, but i sure I have to meet a clause to play. I just thought it was too expensive for just the six damage um, for only blocking for two. Uh, Savage Swing. That's another awesome one that I played for a while this week. As an additional cost to play Savage Swing, discard a random card. It costs one, so you're going to have to have a resource and then a card to discard to play it. Blocks for three, attacks for six is a yellow pitch. Definitely um, a card I messed around with. However, I try to avoid the um, cards that I have to discard a random card to play. So you'll see like Pack Hunt can be played straight up. Predatory Assault can be played straight up. Rally the Rear Guard can be played straight up. Um, Beast Within can be played straight up. Smash Instinct can be played straight up. Except for Wrecker Romp, there's not another one of these Brute cards that make us do that as an additional cost to play um, discard a random card. So we're not Reinar. We don't, we're not intimidating people when we do that. So it's not as important for us. So give me the cards that I can play for sure on my turn. Uh... Savage Feast, for the same reasons I just said Savage Swing, Savage Feast, the red one, um, I, I took out or didn't like. Um, Ghostly Visits, doesn't do six attack, and sure, you can play it out of the Vanish Zone, it costs one, but um, I'm happy with not having that option. I want to keep my numbers, um, I want to keep my numbers relatively near 65% sixes. I don't want to, um, play these cards because I'm being defense heavy so I need room for my nine defense actions or defense reactions and then um, those nine unworldlies are the only ones that I feel like not only does it buff an attack but it um, it could turn off blood debt so this is uh, this is it for this week's episode of lessons in Leviya I would love to hear um, your thoughts and feedback because I never thought about the sink blows, the fate for scenes, um, previous, or, you know, prior to this and they've, they came off a suggestion and I've really liked it. Um, if you've done a similar style where you've been blocking a lot, filling up that graveyard early, attacking with a six or the meat ax, um, early and then deciding okay now is the time where i where i go and flip the switch and become the aggressor let me know what's worked for you and if you have done the hexagore i'm interested because i i cannot figure it out i just can't so um oh and i'm not calling any of her majestics necessarily bad there's just not fitting this style of what i'm trying to achieve in this current build of this deck which is kind of good, maybe, if you're new. You see a lot of commons in here, aside from, obviously, the legendary pants. Well, never mind. My gear is all legendaried up, and then I got Command and Conquers. But you don't need any of her Majestics, I guess. So um, thank you for taking a seat with me at the table, listening to me rant about my favorite Monarch character, and hopefully we can make Leviah, you know, let's get the most out of her. So take care. And we will see you next time on the next lesson in Leviah.